The fate of those hostages taken by Hamas terrorists is still unknown. Many of them, we know, are American. And this adds to a challenging element for the Israeli military in its efforts to rescue them or even find them. For some of the insight on that, let's go to Jeffrey Harp. He's a retired member of the FBI hostage rescue team. Uh, Jeffrey, you did this for years. We know the United States has experts on the ground and in Israel to try and help and find and rescue these 150 hostages. What do you think they're advising at this point? Well, that's that right now it is in, in an advisory capacity. You got to remember that this is a very unique situation. If you look back at international hostage rescues that have attempted to take place or took or have taken place in 1980, they tried to do that uh, in Iran and it didn't work out very well at all. It's a very complex operation. There's a lot of planning involved. And again, if you think about when local, uh, state, and federal agencies here in the U.S. do these hostage rescue, op rescue operations, they're working with negotiators. Right now, it doesn't seem like there's much negotiation going on, and there's just a lot of wartime activity. That makes it very, very difficult. All right, you know the realities of Gaza. It's a tight warren of alleys and tunnels with booby traps. This is going to be really tough. How do you even figure out where the hostages are? Well, and that you know that's a great question, and that's one that I'm sure that intelligence officials in in, in Israel and the U.S. Are, are trying to figure that out. I mean, there's a lot of sophisticated techniques that uh, both countries can use to try to pinpoint locations, and I'm sure they're using those to their fullest extent. But again, that that might help you locate about where the hostages are, but that doesn't get you there. You, just even the delivery of a team into that environment is very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, you really need human and intelligence. You need people on the inside who are telling you something. Um, do you think Israel and the CIA still even have human sources inside Gaza? And can they even reach them, given the blockade and the bombing? Yeah, I'm sure they do. You know, I ran uh, undercover operations against Hamas. And the, the Israelis oftentimes have deep, deep undercover operatives working inside uh, that part of the country, which if, if they're able to get communications in and out, then I'm sure they're talking to them. The problem right now is communications are going to be cut off. Uh, it's very dangerous to be out and about in the city, especially if you're in an undercover capacity. You may be in an environment where you're thought to be a target. Is a ground invasion going to make it easier or harder to find them and rescue them? Well, and, you know, if you think about it, if a ground invasion happens, which it sure, certainly looks like that's going to happen, one thing that will occur is there's going to be casualties and there's going to be so-called enemy combatants or what they're going to call prisoners of war. That gives you something to exchange people with, you know, hostages for hostages. But when a ground invasion starts, they're going to probably go to the most advantageous position for the Israelis to, to do the most damage in the quick, quickest amount of time. And they're certainly going to try to get to as many hostages as you can. But again, what we've seen in the past is Hamas is hell-bent on doing death and destruction as quickly as possible. They've already killed young women, children, uh, babies, men. They have no, there's no doubt in my mind that they have no mercy for anyone, that they're going to do whatever they have to. You know, you've studied Hamas for years. I'm just curious, how much support does Hamas have among Palestinians living in Gaza, the two million-plus people in this tiny, crowded piece of land? Well, and again, it is a tiny, crowded piece of land, but it, their reach extends way beyond that. Yeah. Their reach extends into Europe. It extends into the United States. They do have support outside of that region. So it's not just Gaza where they're getting their support from. But I just keep hearing, you know, when, you know that the Palestinians are innocent um, victims in all of this, that many of the Hamas leaders aren't even in Gaza. So they're in Qatar or someplace else safe and, and certainly more luxurious than Gaza. Um, I'm just, what, what kind of public support does Hamas enjoy inside Gaza among the people who live there? Well, there's those uh, individuals who have thought that Hamas does provide a uh, safe haven for refugees and things like that. Maybe they do, but that still doesn't uh, make it okay for them to have their militant arm, their military wing of their, their organization, go out and murder innocent people. And again, in war times, innocent people do die. It's a tragedy, but you will see that happen.
Yeah, and I have to note that on several of these videos where we've seen the Hamas terrorists parading some of their hostages, women, uh, through Gaza in the aftermath of the attack, the crowds were cheering and many of them spitting on the woman. So, uh, at least in that particular yeah. part of Gaza, they did have a lot of popular support among uh, the people there. All right. So difficult. Jeffrey Harp, thank you so much for joining us tonight and lending us your expertise. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.